Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, today we stand on the precipice of a monumental revolution, a moment that redefines total, not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated, and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of Black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion, and brotherhood. This black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color, that spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, but also of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. It challenges us to re-examine what we know, to question our assumptions, and to open our hearts to the broader possibilities of understanding and faith. As we embark on this journey of discovery and understanding, let us do so with open minds and compassionate hearts. Let us build a nation that truly reflects the teachings of the Black Jesus, a nation that stands for justice, equality, and love for all, regardless of race or creed. First of all, all praises to the Father Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakadash. Shabbat Shalom to all the brothers and sisters in recognition to observing this day for worship in the Most High. Sundown this evening to sundown tomorrow evening, my people, let's make sure we get the rest, the worship, and praise in to our great Father Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, because after all, this is what we are instructed to do as a people it is a commandment in all our dwellings well now we are officially in the book of revelations revelation simply means to reveal what it is other words the truth and finally the truth the most high is bringing now you got some people some of our people are asking questions saying why did Putin wait till now he had to know all this time that the Hamashiach was black that the father himself the heavenly father the father of all creation is so called black okay he had to know regardless of all that who cares 
See, what you got to understand is this. The Most High brings things out on his own time, not ours. So stop with all of that. The questions. Main thing is to be glad about is he's bringing the truth. And we are here in this day and age living it and seeing it in real time. And so is the enemy. Anxiety and fear is what the enemy is feeling right now. The same expression that you see on this Kenite slash Edomite's face before you in this image is fear and anxiety. Surprise. You understand? Pain. Everything. This is just an image of what the enemy is feeling now that they know the truth. And they know they got it coming too. Okay? That's just what it is. Let's enjoy this for what it is and not ask the most high questions. Because, look, just like we are being awakened, they are too. The enemy is too. And so, therefore, we got still a ways to go before we make it to the day to where we are actually restored. Okay? That's just what it is. Now, without further ado, let's get into the lesson. Um, here, we're going to start in 1 Maccabees 348. Okay? And it reads, And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeliness of their images. Okay? This is how... The Hamashiach was usurped. His whole entire identity was usurped by the enemy and became Jesus Christ. White man, Caesar Borgia. You understand? This is how it all happened. The enemy infiltrated our books and painted it in their own likenesses. Okay? This is how Jesus was born. You understand? Mike, was it Michelangelo or whatever? Painted Caesar Borgia. White man Caesar Borgia, who was a reprobate, by the way. And uh, there it was. Blue eye, blonde hair. White man Jesus. Okay? <laughs> the wool is being pulled off. And the Most High is doing it. All praises to the Father, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. For doing what he said he would do. Let's go over here in Jeremiah 16, 19. This is what the heathens finna say. <laughs> See, this is word coming into fruition. Okay, this is what it is, people. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day, days of my Affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. They're coming into knowledge as well. And they finna say this right here. They inherited lies. They inherited that white man, Caesar Borgia, A.K.A. Jesus Christ was actually of them. It was all a lie. Vanity. And ain't no profit in no lie. Because see, everything that they lie, kill, steal, and destroy for, there's no profit because now that the truth is out, all of that's finna be taken away from them. Understand this. It's all finna to be taken away from them. Don't make no difference what kind of fight they put up. They are going down. Daniel 7 and 9, which is what you're going to see on the uh, thumbnail, okay? This is the father himself. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit. 
whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire, okay? Now the wheels is, from what I understand, could be these chariots that everybody's talking about. They're starting to be seen by the way, okay? That is starting to make their presence known. I've actually have a sighting of one myself on film. I did do the video, so there it is. But the, first, the thing is this, this is the image of the Ancient of Days. The creator of all, okay? That what we see before us. And you see what how he say, look, hair of wool. Come on now. What people does this image reflect and describe? That's us, okay? Revelation 1 and 15. And it reads, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, let's just go on down and read this from 12 on down to that part. This is when the Most High, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, sent the angel to John on the island of Patmos to write this right here. This is John writing this. This is John talking, and it reads, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, that's Yahweh Shai, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire boom and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as a sound of many waters okay and that's what i wanted to just get to is that part right there but it goes on to read right here i'm gonna just go and read the whole thing verse 16 and he had in the sight excuse me and he had in the in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword a sword that cuts both ways by the way people okay just because we're coming into knowledge of who we are, that means what we this is great responsibility that's placed upon us. Meaning we're gonna have to change our ways. You're gonna have to stand up now. You're gonna have to walk straight. Like my daddy used to tell me, you're gonna have to walk a straight line, straight talk line, Jack. That's what it is. To continue, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am that lived and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Okay. Here we go with that again. But you know, some of the camp especially gms always talking about no such thing as hell yes it is here it is right here he has the keys to hell and death meaning he has control to throw whoever he may into that hell okay now let's go over here in john 14 9 see some people don't believe that the hamashiach was the one that the father sent a hawashai Saith unto him, Have I, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how saith thou then, Show us the Father? Question. See, Philip them didn't believe 
that he was actually sent by the father. But here's the deal right here. It gets even deeper than that. Remember back in Genesis 1 through 27? It reads here. So Yahweh created, created man in his own image. In the image of Yahweh created he him, male and female created he them. Okay? Do you not understand that it the Most High in Genesis said that he took the clay, the dirt of the earth, and formed Adam? What color is that dirt? What color is that dirt? So, where Yahweh said that he, when you see him, you see the Father, we as his children can say the same thing because he created us in his image. And what color was the dirt when he did it? You understand? It's time for us to wake up too, people. Because you know something? I'm going to tell you. When I was telling some of my relatives, probably about, could have been about five years ago. I don't know. But anyway, I told them what Revelation 1 and 15 said. 14 through 15, that is. And you know what those idiots told me? A couple of them did. Well, don't nobody know what color Jesus is. He a spirit. You know what I'm talking about? See, a lot of our people don't want to accept this either. But now that they've got confirmation, validation from their white oppressor in the form name of Putin. I don't like saying Putin because it's spelled Putin in Russia. Now they might believe us. Even though the word said it. But that wasn't good enough. Now these slave-minded idiots can now finally see that it's true because Putin said it. That just means you better repent and straighten up. If you don't, well, you're going to get destroyed by the enemy. With the enemy, that is. You understand? Now, let's see what the Father has in store for this enemy who done these mean things and lied and said, you know, uh, he was God. Painting his, his own images and all that kind of stuff in the books. Let's go over here in Joel 3 verse 2. And it reads, I will also gather all nations and I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. See, that's what it is. This is what he mad about. And see, he said, brung them. He gonna bring them down in the valley, I mean, valley of Jehoshaphat. You understand? And plead with them. This ain't no begging. This means he finna kick some ass. Understand that. This ain't begging. This ain't pleading. This is a different meaning right here. And it reads, verse one, for, hope, for behold, in those days, and in that time, what well, I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. That was us in this disposition in time. And spiritual Babylon and Egypt. Right here. America. Verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people. And for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people. That's, hey, better here's a big buck right here. He's a, here's a, whatever they called our women back there, a, a bed went south, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? She, 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 she cooks good. She's good in bed. All that stuff. This is what this is talking about. Cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zida? And all the coast of Palestine. See, this is where that all started from. Where you recompense, where, where you render me a recompense. Question. And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense up on your head, your own head, that is, 
because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things everything see and, and that's talking about Hamites too Africans have you ever, ever wondered why when Africans come over here you know what I mean they tend to think that they are better than us here who we're said to be African Americans and all these things that ever happened to us are happening to us up to this day You'll never hear from Africa saying, them my people over there, don't do this to my people. Uh-uh. Why? Because they were in bed with these Kenites slash Edomites to bring us into this bondage. They, those ain't our folks. All right? Understand that. Look, let's go over here in Revelations 2.9, and we're going to read this. And this is the Hamashiach speaking. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You know who's calling themselves Jews in this day and age? You already know. I ain't got to tell you. All right? Revelation 3 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. The Most High going to make the enemy who's lying, saying they somebody they ain't, come worship at his children's feet and let us know he loved us. Just because he puts a great ass whooping on his children. A great ass whooping. He did. And we deserved it. Don't mean he didn't love us. You understand? Because after this, there is fin to be a recompense. There is fin to be a restoration. A raising up of us as a people. By the dear father, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. Understand this, folks. Now, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. And we're going to take this down to 5. 1 to 5. Here it is, folks. This is what the Gentiles fin to do. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Israel the house of Jacob sorry about that it's the house of Jacob is still the same thing verse 2 and the people shall take them that's us and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for service people is us keep that in mind and handmaids you know what this means folks you know what this means and they shall take them captives who captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors verse 3 and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve that thou shalt take up the proverb against the king of Babylon and say how have the oppressor ceased the golden city ceased the Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers Verse 6. Let's just throw that in there. He who smote, he who smote the people in wrath with a continuous stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. That's what it is, folks. This is what's coming next. This right here. This is what's coming next. So understand, this is what the lesson is about. Remember that. 
The Most High is waking us up and is waking up the enemy too. A lot of them are getting on board now. Well, I, I told the truth. I, I did what you wanted me to. Yeah, you did. But hey, <laughs> you still, you still, you finna pay the price. That's just what it is. That's all I got on this particular lesson, people. I hope you found this lesson edifying. I hope I said something to stimulate your spiritual growth. All praise to the Father Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Ruachadash. People, please make sure to live your life as though we are being watched. Simply because we are. This is James, and I'm out. Peace.